that peptides are biopharmaceuticals in the body, and it turns out that stem cells contain cytokines, mediators, peptides, that they may be nothing more than a floating pharmacy because nobody's ever seen them or can corroborate that they turn into anything. So is it possible that inside that stem cell, there are the stimulating factors that go around the body and start the regenerative process? And if we could pick out these peptides through stem cell research, understand what they are, growth factors, we could apply them and move functional parameters in the body in the right direction so that we can start getting out of certain metabolic cascades that drive you towards making more fat instead of making more muscle. So these factors are being discovered now, and the largest growing field in pharmaceutical medicine today is peptides. From there, I started becoming interested in stem cell therapy and started realizing every person should have stem cell therapy. It regenerates the body, except for several conditions. Maybe we're still questionable on cancer, pregnancy, massive infection. But we can see that there's a massive amount of regeneration that's taking place. And if we can increase the organ reserve, the healing capacity in the human being, starting this regenerative process, we might notice that we're using less pharmaceuticals. We're getting more powerful effects. So in the meantime, while we work on this, obviously I can talk forever. I would, my father is Sicilian and my mother's an Egyptian Jew, so I could go on forever, <laughs> if you'd like me to. So we're seeing more and more of this, and what I'm seeing is an evolving of medicine. We're starting to regain a meaning and an understanding into why we originally went in this direction. We're starting to see why taking that oath was so vitally important. And I am encouraged to be in a room with people who are starting to think differently and thinking in terms of regeneration, anti-aging, as a result that can work, and that maybe if we searched in that area, we would calm down much of the degenerative processes going on in the body and start switching into the area of regenerating tissue in the body. I will say that specifically, I was on my motorcycle in Bangkok, Thailand. I was hit by a van. My knee was fractured in three places. My two posterior ligaments tore off my knee. My left meniscus evolved. They said I would have a limp. I might not be able to run. I injected my stem cells into both sides of my knee. Cartilage regrew. Ligaments stronger attachment. Avulsion went away. There's no problem with my knee. That's a pretty bad accident for a knee. So. I encourage you after this to go look at Dr. Parita's work and you'll see that one of the most famous orthopedic physicians is doing this right now. So as we look at this concept, I'm going to allow you guys to push the buttons. All you're going to do is push the arrow forward. As we look at this concept of fat and what's happening on the planet, we could see that at this point, 300 million obese adults on the planet, that this is not a problem that is going away. And we know that obesity is connected to many of the chronic diseases that we are suffering in the United States today, at least except for infectious disease and accidents, probably the top 10 in the United States. Type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, stroke, cancer, we know that all of these things have contributed to, or have effects that are contributory and affected by obesity. Next slide, please. There's obviously a worldwide problem. If we look at the density of obesity on this planet, the United States is ranking up there and is actually almost equivalent to Saudi Arabia where one-third the population has type 2 diabetes. And we know that 90 million Americans in the United States are now are pre-diabetic, and this concept of metabolic syndrome X continues to come up. High blood pressure, high triglycerides, putting on more weight, not controlling, going into a pre-diabetic state. This is why we know that there are hormonal components related to this. Leptin is associated with this that there could be components that may have moved us toward functional parameters that are making us do more adipogenesis, less myogenesis. Next slide. I don't, I don't want to think that the United States is the only one having this problem. If you look at China, what's happening in China, as they're gaining more and more of these Western concepts like fast food, Burger King, McDonald's, Carl's Tumor, Carl's Jr., sorry, I made a mistake, that all of these things are contributory and are creating more and more of this problem, not to mention that genetic modification, epigenetic factors, environmental factors that could be contributing. Next slide. We've discovered, we've known that myostatin is a substance, myostatin is an enzyme in skeletal muscular tissue that stops muscle from growing. We have found now that myostatin being a regulator of muscle growth also helps with control muscle differentiation, may even have an effect on mesenchymal stem cells that are part of that differentiation process. This has been proven in journals already. And the thought 
was if we can block myostatin in cases of sarcopenia, muscle deterioration as a part of growing old over time, muscle begins to deteriorate, losing tonality, muscular dystrophy, that many of these conditions may benefit from gaining control over myostatin so we can rebuild some of this muscle. Next slide. And for cachexia as well. When we, when we think of myostatin as an enzyme and how to possibly control it, we have to begin to understand the communicating mechanisms of the cells. I consider cytokines and mediators the language of the gods because somehow these cells have, have a mechanism by which to communicate with each other. We used to believe, before we started encouraging that there is relativity in medicine too, just like physics and biology and chemistry, that there is relativity in the science, we used to believe that cellular mechanisms in the body happened because the cells bump into each other. 